don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's the 2nd of January. It's the first Saturday in a new year and in a brand new month, which means that it's time for a brand new mission inspiration art challenge over on our Facebook group. I'll put the URL of our group on screen now, but there's also a clickable link in the description area below if you want to join in with us for 2021 with our monthly art challenges don't forget there's one the first saturday of every month and also a smaller mid-month mini mission the third saturday in each month but maybe one or two extra bonus ones thrown in there throughout the month and the year too who knows so without further ado i'm going to turn over to my overhead camera and show you what i'm going to create using the prompts for january Okay, so before I get started on creating my art journal page for January's Mission Inspiration, I wanted to quickly just explain how I created my journal that I'm going to use um, for this year's missions. So this is for the main Mission Inspirations. I will still be using um, the tag journal for the mini inspiration, the mini, mid-month mini Mission Inspirations. I can never get that out quite. Um, so I just wanted to quickly kind of go through how I created this journal. So, and I have already in a previous video shown you how to create something very, very similar. So let me just pop that to one side. So what I've done is I've created my folios, my pages, and just by cutting um, a piece of mixed media cardstock from um, a Dale Rowney pad, uh, and that's the pad that I used. So this is the De La Rowney Mixed Media um, Multi-Techniques paper, um, and I've got an A4 pad, and it's the 250 GSM one of the 169 pound in weight. Um, and I've cut a seven inch by seven inch square. And then all I've done is folded it on the diagonal. Okay. So what I then did was I took some glue, just any type of glue, and on one of the page sides, on the outer page side, I just added some PVA or some white glue, or you can use a glue stick, or you can even use double-sided tape if you want to. And then I took a second sheet, which I've done exactly the same, and then I glued one to the other. Just like that. I know it can be a little bit of a messy process depending on how much glue you use but make sure that you get them lined up. You've got a little bit of wiggle room to get it lined up before it goes off. So line up your sheets, pop some weights on it if you want to, clamp it, put some um, masking tape on, anything just to get your paper to stick or to weight it down or even just put weights on it until it grabs. Now I did that 15 times. So I did 15 sheets. Now the benefit of doing that is that you also get a sheet for the inside of both your covers and then that gives you 13 sheets on the inside of your journal. Now the reason I've done 13 sheets for mine, because it gives me two pages to do for October, the non-Halloween version and the autumn or fall version in October. So I've got 13 pages in the middle, which is perfect for doing the Mission Inspiration journals. Now, once I've got the, blue, the, the glue block stuck down, I've cut some grey some grey board and all I'm going to do is either cover those or paint them or put paper on them and then do the same thing which will then create your covers for your journal but before you do that you might want to hide your spine so all I did on that was I put some fabric just over the top before I glued the covers on so like I said it's just the same as the lay flat journal that I created a while ago. And if you missed that, I will put a link, one of those iCard things up on the screen here, 
so you can see how I created that lay flat journal because it's exactly the same as this one, just a different shape. So it's the entire process, exactly the same process that I did for the triangle one that turns into the square one as I did for that lay flat journal a while ago. So I hope that makes some kind of sense. Okay, so let's take a look at the prompt card for January 2021. I'll put a bigger version on the screen here just so you can see it. So we've got the colours Tropical Teal, <coughs> oh, excuse me, Terracotta, Golden Honey, and then we've got our ingredients to include somewhere on the page, use a stencil, torn book text, paint, a die cut or punch, or doodles, or and doodles. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly assemble what I need for the page. So I've got a couple of stencils, some book text, I've got my paints. Now in this case I'm going to be using Americana, um, or the Deco Art Americana ones. So I've got Peacock Teal, which is my tropical teal colour, Terracotta. I just happen to have a Terracotta. And for the Golden Honey I'm going to use Ochre. So those are going to be my three colours that I'm going to use for my art journal page. So because of the beauty of using this triangular book, I can go either, yes, thank you. I can go either that way or that way, or work that way, or work that way if I want to. So I've got quite a lot of flexibility with which way I'm going to create the page. So for the first one, just to make it easier, I'm going to go that way. So what I need to do is I'm going to tear off some book text, which I've got an old, um, it looks like a, an encyclopedia page here. And I'm going to create, just tear off some pieces and stick that down using some matte medium. So I'll grab my matte medium. There we go. Put some on my work surface there. Grab a brush of which they're all hiding. No, I'll need to get some clean ones. That will do just there. And then I can start to tear up some of this book text. I will be using some more book text elsewhere on the page, but just to create a little bit of background. Now I am going to be aware of where the crease is on the page as well. So I'll just put a little bit on the back just to stop as many bubbles as we can, but we'll eliminate all of them, but we'll get rid of most. Okay. So we'll just go over the top. A little bit, if we're missing any underneath. That creates our first layer, so then we'll have a second one. Just randomly tear, and then we'll have some going down this way. And again, just add a little bit to the back. And lay that around about there, just so it kind of crosses over into the crease a little bit. When I first started um, art journaling way back in the day, one of the biggest problems that I had was, um, was getting my pages to stop sticking together. Because a lot of the mediums that you use, or a lot of the glues, or a lot of the paints, had a kind of glossy effect to them. Um, as soon as you closed your book, the pages stuck together and it took absolutely ages and ages and ages and ages to work out how to eliminate that. And the easiest way to do it is to only use matte products. Anything with a gloss or a satin or a sheen to it tends to stick. So a good way to do or to eliminate your pages sticking together is to go over everything 
with either a clear gesso or something that's matte rather than glossy or shiny. So we'll just create a few interest points up here. I'm trying to keep it so that um, the page or the text on the page is the right way around. Not that you'll be able to read it when I'm finished, but it just adds that little bit of interest that you might be able to. Okay. That seems to be it for that layer at least. Okay, so I shall get that dried off, have a bit of a tidy up and clean up, and I'll be right back for the next step. Okay, so now that my matte medium and that book text is nice and dry, uh, I'm going to just knock back that book text just by adding in some white gesso over the top. Now, I'm not going to go really, really mad with this. I'm just going to add a layer over the top. Now you can add just a touch of water to this, just to kind of diffuse it a little bit. So I've got a little pot of water by my side in a little pot. There we go, so it just knocks it back a little bit and you can go further back in some areas if you want to. And then lift it off in others. But remember, when it dries, it will go a little bit lighter anyway. And I'm just going in different directions just to kind of get rid of some brush marks that we don't necessarily want. And there we go. So I'll just drop that in some water. Make sure I've got the lid back on my gesso properly because my last lot of gesso, I didn't put the lid back on and it went, it went solid. <laughs> but that's what happens. All right, let's get this dried off. Okay, so that's now dry and you can still see the book text underneath, but it is just knocked back a little bit into um, in that background. So I'm going to add some colour now. So my first colour that I'm going to use is some of that terracotta. And I'm going to use that kind of down here towards the bottom. And I'm not going to use a huge amount because I'm going to apply it using a wet wipe. It says reaching down for one, there we go. So I've got this little wet wipe here. It's still a little bit moist. So I'm gonna take some of that paint, but because we've used the white gesso, then it will go a little bit further and move on the page. And then I just pick up some of that and then go down and just dab get it in darker areas. So that it's not a complete kind of like block of color. We have got some variation in the depth of color on the page. Okay, so I wanna dry that off first. It doesn't take long. And then I'm going to pick up some of that ochre. Put some of that down on the page. Ah, you see, even shaking it, it hasn't got rid of that binder from the top. So I need to shake it a little bit harder. That's better. These paints do separate if you don't use them for a, a while. So you do have to remember to give them a good shake. I'm going to turn the book round and then just flip that wet wipe a little bit, pick up 
some of that ochre and then I'm going to start applying that into the page down here and just kind of lightly kind of blend it into the terracotta. So a little bit more, just a tad more. And then just going about a third of the way up because we've got the three colours that I want to use. And then I can start just to add in those kind of blocks and blobs like we had before. And then just bring some of those down just to help diffuse that transition between the terracotta and the ochre. Okay, so again, get that dried off. Again, it doesn't take long because you're only using thin layers. And then finally, we'll bring in that peacock teal. Give it a good shake. Get rid of that. And then add some of that onto the work surface. And again, I'm just going to use the same wet wipe and then take some of that blue and then or the tealy blue and then work it down. And then just dot and dab and blend. I'm going a little bit darker towards the top and then as I'm bringing it down I'm putting a little bit more pressure on the wet wipe just to kind of force it to diffuse a little bit more. So wipe over a little bit and then I'm going to just turn to a clean piece and then just rub a little bit more just to kind of help it diffuse along that edge. And then just turn it back around again. And again, just go over those spots, just adding a little bit of mottling. So we've got some nice kind of distressed, grungy kind of effect with that paint. And then just gently just rub, just to kind of diffuse it a little bit. And then when we're done, just give it a quick wipe, clear up. There we go. Drop that into the bin and then let's get that dried off. So like I said, it doesn't take long at all. Okay, so let's just bring back in our sheets. So we've used our Tom Book text, we've used paint, we've got tropical teal terracotta and golden honey. So we've got those in our background. I'm now going to bring in the stencil. So for this one, I've got my quatrefoil stencil and I'm going to just lay that over the top of there and I've got some white paint. This is Deco Art Americana Snow White or Titanium White. For some reason it has both of those names on there. And again, just get rid of those dried bits because we don't want those. And we'll just put a little bit of that white paint down on there. Now we can use white gesso for this. It's um, not a huge problem. And I just want a little bit of sponge. Let's see, I've got a makeup sponge, which will do just nicely. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the paint, just diffuse it into the sponge. And then I can just lightly go over introduce that pattern into the background. So just nice and subtle and I'll do some over this side. So I think sometimes um, 
we tend to go a bit too heavy with our stenciling because we think it needs to have impact. Well, actually, you know, it doesn't really. You can have subtle stenciling if you want. And you don't have to have, you know, lots and lots and lots of stencils. You can just use one and just have a little bit in the background. Or you can have two, but just limit them. Try, you know, restraint is a good thing when you're out journaling. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. I'm not going to do any more on that, so I'll get that dried off, get this cleared up, and I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, that's all nice and dry now. So let's just bring back that sheet again. So uh, next one on the list that I'm gonna use is the die cut or the punches. So I've got some dies here from Tim Holt. Um, it says on there, in no particular order, it doesn't matter what order you use these ingredients in, it's entirely up to you. Um, in fact, you don't even have to use all of them. They're only suggested ingredients to include in your art journal. So you might not want to use paint, you might want to use ink instead. Well, that's fine, as long as you're incorporating something from the suggested list. And again, you don't have to use all three colours. You could just have the, one of the colours as your main focal colour um, and only use the one. So you might want to do a monotone or monochrome, sorry, monotone, monochrome <laughs> effect in your art journal. That's fine too. As long as you're getting some inspiration from this card, it's doing its job. Okay, so die cuts, punches next. I'm going to bring back the other sheet of that book text. So let's pop my art journal to one side for a second. Um, what I want to try and do is I want some of these um, flower kind of thinlets. So this is the Tim Holtz, um, can't remember what this one's called, Wildflower Stems 2. Um, and I want some of these. I want the dandelion. I want that dandelion. So I'm going to put that through the big shot. And probably I'll try and do that one as well. Just give me a little bit of extra foliage. But I'm going to incorporate um, this one as well. This is from the Detailed Butterflies set. But I'm only going to do the one. Now with these, and for some strange reason I've got three in there. This should be ah, this should be four. Right. So you get the outline, the main outline for the background, which is that one and that one there, which does a little bit of embossing, but it doesn't cut all the detail out. This one is the one that cuts all the detail out. So this is the one that I'm going to use, or that's the one that I'm going to use. And I want to add that onto the sheet when I die cut as well. So I'm incorporating die cuts from two different sets from that book page. So I obviously will need to run those through my big shot. It says trying to put those away and it's not working very well. I'm a bit cack-handed today. There we go. So I will go run those through my big shot and then I'll be right back. Okay, so my die cuts. So these are going to be quite delicate, so I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time just popping the bits out that I want. There we go. So let's just try and very, very delicately peel that butterfly off, there we go, from the book text. I can clear that out later. And then we've got the pieces. Okay, so this is also going to be extremely delicate. So if I take it from the bottom first, there we go, release that one, and then I can very, very gently just peel it upwards until I get to the top bit and then I can just tease those out really really gently. 
So this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'll go away and try and extricate this paper <laughs> from the die without tearing it, which I think I've just done because it's quite brittle paper. And then I'll join you when I've sort of, or hopefully, got it all out. There we go. Ta-da! So we did leave a little bit behind, but I'm sure we can fix that. There we are. Okay. Let me try and get this one out and I'll be right back. Okay, so there we have my die cuts. So I did manage to tear a little bit, but that's fine. We can, as they say, fix it in post. And then I've got my butterfly and I've got my other piece of wildflower stem. Um, I did make a rod for my own back with this because it was old and brittle paper. So if I'd have spritzed it with a little bit of water and maybe made the paper a little bit damp before putting it through, it probably would have held up a little bit better, but it's not a problem. So let's just move those to one side and then bring back in my art journal. I want the matte medium again. So we're going to stick these down with matte medium and it's going to be a very, very delicate operation because obviously they are extremely delicate and fragile. So we'll do this as delicately as we can. So I'm going to take a little bit of that. Let's get this dandelion one down first. So I want to put that so it comes right up the middle. Because I've used acrylic paint, none of this paint or background will lift up. Right, so I'll just go in. Oh, it won't um, reactivate. So I'll just go over the top with that and then let's lift up that piece and see if we can get it into position. There we go. You, you wouldn't even notice that it's come away from the main body. Okay, so for that second piece, I'm just doing it at a slight angle. Like that, and again, just brush upwards because we already had the glue underneath. Once we go over the top, just put a little bit of pressure on it, it's fine. And then we've got the butterfly, which I think, yeah, I think I'm going to put over here, and I'm just going to do it overlapping. So it's about there. That'll do. Probably didn't need that other one. But hey ho. That's fine. Okay, so the next thing, I want to bring in a focal point for the art journal page. Um, and for that, I have a printout. So I should just go and grab it from the printer and I'll be right back. Okay, so the image that I'm going to incorporate into this art journal page is this um, statue um, of an angel, obviously holding the hands together like the praying. Now, on its own, this looks quite kind of jarring on this art journal page, but I'm going to cut her out. So I'm actually going to go around and cut the angel out from the background so that we've just got that image. So all of this in the background will disappear and it will help to blend the image in a lot better. So I'll go away and cut that out and then I'll be right back. Okay, so my little angel is cut out and you can see now once that background is removed, it's not quite so jarring um, on the page. 
So what I want to do is I want to give that some glue, give the whole bottom section there a little coating and then I can position, actually I might just take it off the page a little. Yeah, we can afford to lose a little bit of the angel's wing. And bring some more of that matte medium in. And then just scoot a little bit underneath, just to help it set and gel. Okay, so what looks like wrinkles, we've got a little wrinkle there, but that's fine. If I smooth that down, it'll be fine. So drop the brush in some water, get that dried off, and then I'll be back. Okay, so my little angel is stuck down. I've trimmed off the excess on the wing, so it now looks uh, a bit more integrated into the page but what I want to try and do is just to kind of tint a little bit so what I'm going to do is just grab that terracotta colour colour again and just put a little blob down here on there down here on there down here on my mat and then with just a little bit of water I'm just going to lighten it and then I'm just going to go over, just adding a little bit of colour into the angel. Because I've gone over with the matte medium, it will kind of hold a little bit of colour. Now you could use um, the pit pens, uh, Faber-Castell pit pens, which are India ink which will kind of do a similar kind of thing. But if you haven't got those, then just gently going over with a tiny, tiny bit of water on your finger, providing you've got that matte medium down first, will help just to kind of diffuse and tint the image. and help it integrate into the page a little bit more rather than it be too stark white. You can see how it's just kind of helping to blend in a little bit. A bit more water. Of a stray bristle. There we go. And as with before, you can add a little bit more if you want it to go a little bit darker. Just wait till it's dried and then just go back and very, very gently. You don't want to be rubbing too hard because you'll, you'll end up taking the top surface of the paper off and you don't want that. Unless you do. <laughs> and you can just manoeuvre the water and the paint around the page. I hope that's not too subtle that you can't see it actually on the camera but it's definitely taken on a slight tint of that colour to kind of help blend it in with the rest of the page.
There we go. And you can keep them going until you're happy. Or not, as the case may be. Just keep them going until you're happy with the level. And you can just keep integrating the colour until you are. There we go. I think that's going to be that for me. So I'll just get that cleared up. Like so. And then I'm ready to add my final touches. Okay, so quickly, let's get the my quote stuck down. So I've taken a little phrase, a little quote, I think is quite apt for this year and hopefully sorry not for this year for last year 2020 and also for 2021 so the quote is we were born with the weakness to fail and that's for 2020 but also born with the strength to rise and that's for 2021 so i'm going to glue those in just using a Dine Rivley glue stick but I might put the first part down here over my angel so we were born with the weakness to fail we can go down at the bottom on that side half of the slogan, the phrase, the quote, can go towards the top here. I think I'm just going to trim that down just a little bit. It is kind of quite big and imposing. I probably should have used maybe a smaller font size when I printed this off on the computer which I did at the same time as doing the image. So I pretty much knew what I wanted to say obviously based on the image that I'd chosen. So I can go towards the top there. That way we're not hiding the butterfly at all. Okay, so on to the final stretch. Okay, so just looking back at the card, so Tropical Teal, Terracotta, Golden Honey, we've incorporated those colours in there. We've got fantasy, imagining the impossible or improbable things, so we've got our little angel, which serves as our kind of fantasy element there. We've used a stencil, we've used Bon Ton book text in the background, but also um, with the die cuts and the punches. We've used paint rather than any other coloured medium. So the last thing we've got to do is to add some doodles, which is the last bit down there. So for that, I am going to use one of these Signo Gel Grip pens. Uh, sorry, it's a Uniball, Signo Uniball. And I am going to go around my word blocks with some black outlines just a little bit of doodling just helps your boxes pop but also what I will do is I will give it a little bit of a doodle border and a frame just to kind of finish off. So 
So I'll just go around the box. I'm not being too careful about keeping the line straight. I'm not using a ruler or anything. I'm just going to go around just helping that last bit just to pop. So again if I'd wanted to I could maybe go around the angel as well in the black but I'm going to add a bit of a doodle border so just to kind of help it all gel together. It's a little bit like barbed wire I suppose but <laughs> helps to create a bit of a frame around the page. we go. So that kind of completes the frame around the page but if you wanted to as well you could add just a few kind of clusters in the background of doodle dots just to add a little bit of interest into the background And I'm just spinning it around and doing them randomly because this is going to be one of those art journal pages that I'm going to do different angles as well so the next page I do I probably will do it that way so that you have to keep turning the book around when you're done so just when we're going back through it maybe next year this time next year see I could add white splatters I could add dark splatters but I'm not going to. Um, I could as well maybe just go around the outline of the butterfly but I'd rather have that just in the background as a bit of an interest to, for, you to, you know, for your eyes to focus on and go what is that and to draw you in to see exactly what is going on on that page. So I think that's me done for January 2021 so I'm just going to quickly sign it down here and date it and today is the second of January 21 2121 and that's me done for January so I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this art journal page if you have please remember to give the video a thumbs up share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video but don't forget if you want to join in with us on our mission inspiration Facebook group uh, and join in with the art challenges throughout the month and indeed for the rest of the year then I'll put that um, URL on the screen now, but there's also a clickable link in the description area below. So that's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.